What's going on, everyone? This is the greatest travel podcast in the universe. I am your host, Fraser LeVay, and we talk travel, sports, nonsense. But today, we are going to Rome. Rome is a top three city to visit in the entire world. It is pure magic. You can't just call the city romantic or beautiful or perfect because it's so much more than that. It needs its own word. A word that encompasses the movie Titanic, Catherine Zeta-Jones, the most expensive bottle of champagne you've ever had, Cupid's, feeding you said champagne while you fat a gladiator for true love. Maybe you're hand feeding 42 puppies cookies at the same time, or watching Game of Thrones season eight, episode five, all while under God's name, under the watchful eye of the Pope with his blessings. This is Rome. It is incredible. I get hair stands up on my neck when I think about my trip to Rome. Warmth, excitement, happiness, a grin from ear to ear is all you're left with when you go to Rome. You'll, it's just it's awe-inspiring. It's, I don't know, it's just a book. It's truly a book and not just one book by itself. It's a history book a romance novel, a mystery book, and a choose your own adventure. All in one. Plus National Geographic. Um, when I visited, I said out loud to myself multiple times, what a magical place. I just said that over and over. And as you walk around Rome, all you think of is like, how? Just how? It doesn't make, it seems like a painting. Like, no, how is there this much to see? The architecture, the statues, every step and detail of every block are unparalleled. You think every structure took millions of years to construct. It's just incredible. Um, I'm going to get into the best things to do in Rome, but I just want you to know you absolutely have to go. And there's one thing you must do in Rome. The most important thing to do in Rome, which we'll get to, if Rome was on your list, put it on your list. Let's, let's just get back here of an easy way to do this. So Rome is cheap to fly into from North America compared to if you're going to say Greece or Rome or um, Greece or Croatia or Budapest. Make it your first or your last stop. It's cheap to fly there, fly there, stay a few days, then go on to your destination and then fly back and do the same thing. Maybe you stop in Paris, maybe you stop in London, which are again, easy flights from North America. Uh, not only do you save money because that's cheap to fly once you're in Europe, you also avoid 24 hour flights, 36 hour flights, multiple stops. You can just get direct flights to Rome from New York, from Los Angeles, from Miami, I'm sure Atlanta, Houston, Chicago. So something to think about that you must do. Uh, absolutely a great place to go. And now, what is this one thing? I've got tips, tricks, ideas, but if you before you turn off this podcast, there is wait for this one trip, one tip that you must do. Um, it's so important because once I say it, anyone who's been there knows exactly what I mean. Everyone in Rome is on the schedule, rushing each museum, trying to see every single thing, um, and just not doing what you should do. You don't need me to tell you a podcast or a blog or anyone, hey, you need to go see the Colosseum. Oh, you need to see the Pantheon. You need to go see those, of course, but you're not listening for me to tell you that, are you? So this sounds like a very dumbed down idea, but when you do it, it'll change your Roman experience. 
I don't know if that is how you say it. Your Roman experience, probably not. You're not experiencing Romans. I guess you are. So maybe that is correct. Uh, I will go over the things you must see, of course. But here it is. The one thing you must do in Rome, and the answer is get lost. Sounds stupid. Throw away your rush itinerary. Go for long walks, day and night. Of course, make a little checklist of the main things that every website, this website as well, tells you to visit. But don't make it about set times or places or whatever. Just walk around and visit the unparalleled beauty that is Rome. I already said awe-inspiring. It truly is a definition of awe-inspiring. You put awe-inspiring dictionary, picture, Rome. It's incredible. Of course, you do need things like uh, the Vatican. You need certain times, the papal visit, that sort of stuff. You kind of have to be on a timeline for a few things, but the rest just go. It's the perfect walking city, especially your first night or day. Get outside and just walk. Don't be like, oh, we have to see the Colosseum. No, sure, you can find out where you are and start walking towards the Colosseum. Great or the Spanish Steps, or the Trevi Fountain. But then just meander around. Go where it takes you. Stumble across things that you'll just see organically. I remember I wasn't even looking for the Pantheon. I was walking, and then I turned a corner, and there it was. I was like, oh my god, this is gorgeous. This is incredible. Every corner, if you've been to Rome, so you, you obviously, like we talked about, there's the five, six main things everyone knows, the Vatican, etc. But there's about a thousand things you've never heard of where you'll just turn a corner and you're like, what the hell? Where did that come from? What is that? Why is that so beautiful? Like it truly just is breathtaking. So don't rush around to go from one spot to the other. There's some places you'll never see if you don't get lost. Some gorgeous places. You'll, you know, stop for a drink when you're thirsty. Have a glass of wine. Stumble into a random museum. Shop when you want to shop. Eat when you want to eat. There's hundreds of restaurants on the road. Just go around and do whatever you want on no schedule. That's probably how I should have started off. Don't be on a schedule. Get lost. Don't be on a schedule. Those are the two most important things. Aside from the one or two things you have to schedule, of course. But aside from that, Take rights instead of lefts. Follow your heart, as you never know what might be around each corner. Even the streets are enthralling. The cobblestone streets, they're made up of volcanic rock that well up in the hills behind the city. The surface that you just walk around just adds depth to this like, gorgeous place with cafes on the street. And uh, I just love the cobblestone streets. They're gorgeous. Um, cute history for you. They say there are as many cobbles as there are souls that St. Peter has saved. Um, some cobblestones also tell stories. There's the one that uh, was an attempt to assassinate Pope John Paul II. And there's also some, like in the Jewish quarter, we will find some dedicated to the lives of people arrested by German tro troops and deported to Auschwitz. There's just so much history, so much beauty. Um, you really just want to soak in the magic that is Rome. I would spend at least three days, minimum, stay longer, but you need at least three days in Rome and wear comfortable shoes. I think it's the only place and the only time in my life I've put a bunch of pillows under my feet and elevated my feet. My ankles and legs were so swollen. I walked, I, I didn't have any sort of device that measured my distance at the time. And oh my God, I think it was before the health app on an iPhone happened, like right before, or it wasn't as sophisticated as, as it is now. But I must have done marathons in a few days. It was crazy. Uh, it truly just is a magical place. You walk around and yeah.
So aside from gain loss, let me give you some actual things to do that aren't just the Coliseum, some different stuff that you may not know, and just to get you excited that you're like, hey, I know those four things you've talked about, Fraser, but what are some other unique things to do? Some hidden gems, some cultural wonders, stuff that you must do. Um, I'm also going to tell you, Rome at night, better than Rome during the day. Not only is it less hot, everything's lit up. It's almost like Christmas, like at night when there's string lights everywhere and malls and outdoor spaces are more pretty. Same idea. Rome at night is glowing, lit up. There's less crowds. I went in the middle of the night to the Trevi Fountain and to the Spanish Steps. I was the only person at the Spanish Steps and one of a handful of people at the fountain. So at night, you not only get a unique, different look, but also better temperatures, less people. The Colosseum at night, you have to go. You have to see that at night. Oh my gosh, it's gorgeous. Um, just a whole unique side. Absolutely lovely. So my list also, the Vatican, uh, one other thing, the Vatican, uh, Rome, the streets of Rome are significantly better than the Vatican. I, the Vatican is kind of like a hurry up and wait. The Sistine Chapel is cool, but it's just like, it's one of those things you're like, oh, the Sistine Chapel, neat. There's a million rugs and sarcophaguses. I don't know if there's sarcophaguses or if I'm even saying that correctly. But there's just rugs and paintings in the Vatican. Of course, incredible history. If you're into all that and you have a guy, bore your eyes out and listen to that. It sounds miserable, respectfully. I like to go around and walk and just see the beauty that is Rome. Um, for the Vatican, it, it's like you're in a line. It's hot. Do not. Another tip I have, do not go in the summer. Oh, my God, it's miserable. So hot and humid. And you have to wear sleeves and pants in the Vatican. So dripping sweat. It's a cattle call. Like you're just front to back with people in a line walking through the Vatican for hours. Saying, seeing rugs and stuff. That's like, all right, I saw it. I get it. There is unique, cool stuff, especially if you have a good guide. And if that's what you're into, awesome. It is historic, incredible. But after a couple hours of heat, seeing the same thing over and over, Kind of over it. Uh, I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that. Rome, Vatican, things to do, unique. Well, whatever. We'll get into uh, the things to do. Must see things, obvious spots, but with steps. Uh, I've mentioned the Spanish steps, Trevi Fountain, of course. I mentioned go late at night or early in the morning. Let's say you're even jet lagged and your flight arrives at 5 a.m. Just go right there or at night, go right there. Um, and I mentioned I went, I went after a, a bar closed. I had a few drinks, 2 a.m. Had both the Trevi Fountain and the steps myself. Clearly you have to see the Coliseum, Castle San Angelo, you may not have heard of. Gorgeous, cool, incredible picture. Uh, the Pantheon, of course, is stunning, but see them at night. Uh, and then the Coliseum is also one of the new wonders of the world. So make sure you check that off your bucket list. Um, visit Villa Borghese and the Borghese Museum. It's kind of similar to Central Park. Uh, if you're with a significant other, which is a great place to go with a significant other, it's, there's a musician on every corner, someone playing the violin, someone playing the cello. And that's the thing about Rome in general. You walk around and there's a street performers playing this gorgeous music on a violin, on a cello, on some other string instrument, maybe a woodwind. I don't know. But it just adds to the ambiance of you strolling on these cobblestone roads, looking around. I could go on and on. I already have. So I'll try not to just, you know, telling you to go to Rome over and over. But this is what the podcast is for. Um, but the Villa Borghese is a park, absolutely stunning. There's a rowboat ride. There's a museum. 
you know, so exercise, everyone's walking, running, biking, exercising at the park. Great. Another thing to do, stroll, Trastevere, or Trastevere. I don't know. Did that sound all right? That sounded kind of like I knew what I was talking about there, or had an accent. Maybe not. Maybe it sounded terrible. But to me, it sounded good. Trastevere sounds great. Don't can't tell me otherwise. Uh, when you think of Europe, you think of those narrow streets with like cute little balconies, laundry flowing overhead, as well as like ivy and flowers draped along the charming buildings. Well, Trastevere, Trastevere is that it uh it's so cool you just feel like you're in a movie a rome movie which i guess you're in rome and movies in rome so that makes sense but uh yeah it's not an enormous area spend a few hours soaking it in have a stroll eat lunch there it's an authentic beautiful neighborhood you know have coffee there of course another thing about rome i'm not a coffee drinker it was hot is all hell outside. I had a cappuccino all the time. Their cappuccino, I don't know what's in there. It might be crack. It is outworldly how good their cappuccino is. I don't even understand. I was like, oh, I guess I like coffee now because normally it tastes like awful. This was remarkable. Um, so yeah, stuff for coffee all the time. Uh, Trastevere is also home to the incredible uh, Basilica of Santa Maria which also has a great gift shop, the Church of Santa Cecilia. Be sure to donate and light a candle at Santa Maria to fully integrate in the experience and get your wishes and blessings out there. Like all of Rome, Trastevere has some great piazzas to linger at. Piazzas being plazas, so just places to sit near the fountain or whatever's in the middle of it. Have your gelato, have your cappuccino, whatever, and people watch, relax, even grab a glass of wine, sit on there and just hang on out, look at your map, see where you are, plan your next direction. Again, like I told you, don't have a set place to go next. Just be like, we're going to go that direction on the way to X, Y, Z. And uh, yeah. So some other piazzas, Piazza Santa Maria has mentioned, Piazza San Calisto, and Piazza Trilusa are some to check out on your walk. Uh, and as I mentioned, incredible, authentic, like drinking and eating place. Lots of RC craft beers in the area, lots of patios. Very just kind of trendy, fun, historic feeling place that you have to go visit. Of course, there's other museums if you're into museums. And uh, yeah, next thing to do, you might, you must. Climb, walk, run, Giannacolo Hill. Between Trastevere and the Vatican is Giannacolo Hill. I don't know why I sounded Indian when I said hill, but. Uh, so when, not only does the hill, Giannacolo, is that getting annoying yet? Hill have uh, incredible structures, embassies, and things to do in its own right. It'll also give you some of the best views of Rome. It is a pretty tough hike, especially in the summer. It's quite hot. Um, sorry, it's not an incredibly tough hike, but if it is hot or you've been walking all day, it definitely can be a little bit rougher than it is, but it's really not that hard if you haven't walked all day and in the heat all day. Um, with that said, there's cold beer and drink carts at the top. So that's always something. Grab that at the top, soak in the stunning views of Rome. And it's another perfect place to just sit, relax. And again, don't be in a rush. Stay a few extra days, stay four days. Don't be in a rush. Casually enjoy Rome. I tell one of my biggest tips or the biggest mistakes that travelers make is they try and fit too much into their uh, vacation or into their trip. For instance, if you were going to, I don't know, Germany, and you wanted to see Rome and Germany, maybe this is a dumb example, Venice. If you wanted to do Venice, and you wanted to do three other places in, in Italy, and you only had a week or two weeks, don't do that. Spend four days in Rome, five days 
any other destination, try and say four, four to seven days in each destination. Because if you go like two days in Rome, two days in Venice, two days in Malta, two, it's, you're, you're never relaxed. You're trying to cram everything. You're not really soaking in the culture. You're just trying to check things off your list. But to that point, that's not what traveling is about. It's about immersing yourself in a place, seeing things you weren't expecting to see, really just soaking in and loving this area versus, oh, check, I was here. Oh, check this off my list. Oh, check this off my list. There's so much more to see. Slow down, relax. The next thing on the list is one of the coolest things. I don't know if cool is the word. Creepy, unique, unique. One of the more unique places I've ever seen. And again, I wouldn't, you would never have known this unless you stumble upon it or had a really good podcast that you listened to, one of the greatest podcasts in the universe, probably, that told you this. The Capuchin Crypt. Um, it's not on a lot of people's top Rome list, as you can probably figure out, crypt isn't a positive word. You have to go. I tell you to travel to see things that you've never seen before, and this is one of those things. Well, I mentioned not seeing the same museum over and over and over and the same rugs. I do love things that evoke a, an emotional response. And this absolutely does. This museum contains bones and remains of close to 4,000 bodies. Underneath the Santa Maria della Concepcion della Cappuccini, I think I butchered that, lies one of the top three feelings I had in Rome. It gave me chills. It actually took my breath away. And it was such a visceral, surreal experience. Literally no hyperbole. Like it took my breath away. I had shortness of breath and my chest felt tight. I know this isn't, I'm not selling it. Like, oh, I want to feel that. Probably don't. I truly did feel that way. Never seen anything like it. My jaw dropped. There's only been a few times in my life where my jaw literally dropped. Like, and just stays open. It's not just a saying. That can happen when you see a few things such as this in your life. Wow. It isn't very long. They don't allow you to take pictures. It's a bunch of skeletons and other stuff on top of each other. It's wild. It's worth 20 minutes of your time. And in my thought, the feeling I got, the experience that I got was better than my four hours in the Vatican museum and lineup process. Uh, the Capuchin Order believes the remains of former friars are a reminder of the swift passage of life on Earth and our own mortality. So, you're not allowed pictures, but I'm sure you can Google it and maybe find out. Uh, if you're watching this on TV, my light keeps on going out because I live in Costa Rica and there's terrible circuits that screw up my life. Moving on. Go piazza hopping. No, not pizza hopping. Do that too. Um, I, don't know, I, I won't lie. I didn't know what to expect when I went to Rome. And then I had the most stunning feeling instantly when I arrived. As I got off the metro, I turned the corner and walked into Piazza del Popo as someone was playing the violin. And I instantly fell in love. Again, it was out of a movie. It was just, you're welcome to Rome. This is absolutely stunning, incredible, all the words. Wow. Uh, the piazzas in Rome are incredible, not just for their beauty, but it's also a meeting place for locals, a place to sit on a restaurant patio or somewhere to drink your cappuccino or wine and see the world go by. Uh, here are a few you have to see, but pure. But per uh, my number one advice, don't over plan to see them right out the gates. Just bump into them along your adventures. And uh, I mean, heck, I ran into one of the best ones by accident. The first steps I had in Rome, literally I got off the metro and I ran into one of the best piazzas to see. So it's more exciting to do it that way. Then towards the end of your trip, if you realize, oh, you missed some places, then of course seek them out. So Piazza del Popo is just a stunning it's just stunning. And it's inside the walls of Rome with an Egyptian obelisk and a couple gorgeous twin churches of Santa Maria and Monte Santo. 
Uh, it's also a link to Villa Borghese Gardens, which, as mentioned, you have to see that. Uh, interesting, again, about this place is uh, it was the main place for public executions, which ended in 1826. History for you. Uh, Campo de Fiori is one of the more well-known piazzas in Rome with bars, restaurants, a beautiful market that dates back to the Middle Ages. If you want to get some late night drinks, this is also the spot. <clears throat> Piazza della Rotonda is well known as home to the Pantheon, but also has these perfect water fountains that I love much, as much as anything in Rome. There's just water fountains everywhere that are beautifully decorated and you just fill your water up. I don't know why I'm so easily amused by those, but great. Piazza Novana is maybe the most famous piazza as it has a ton of history dating back to markets, public games, and it's probably the most beautiful piazza in Rome. Piazza del, della Madonna del Monte is small, but always packed with people as it is within sight of the Colosseum. There's also, again, great patios there. Grab a beer, cappuccino, wine, or gelato before you head to the Colosseum. Piazza de Spagna is an easy one as it's just basically on the base of the sta Spanish Steps. It, not basically, it is on the base of the Spanish Steps. There's also an incredible obelisk that was worth visiting just for itself. Um, yeah, another one, Piazza di Santa Maria, already mentioned. And yeah, great thing to do is just go to the squares, go to the piazzas, hang out, people watch, watch the world go by. Another thing to do, attend the papal audience at St. Peter's Square. Um, what an experience. The setting is stunning in St. Peter's Square. The energy, the emotions, the spiritual, incredible experience. Even if you aren't Catholic, um, it's... I like to experience all sorts of religious ceremonies and things, whether it was India in um the oldest city on earth basically what's the one in india where i was visiting i forget but india cambodia everywhere so even if you're not catholic go check it out it's such a once in a lifetime experience even if you don't believe in catholicism of course with all the negativity that's surrounded it lately it's still something you should pass up and i would say the same about doing something muslim or Buddhist, whatever else, um, check it out. And I think if you're in Rome, you're probably there because of those certain things anyways. You can experience the papal audience on Wednesdays when the Pope's in town. And you just obviously Google it for more info on that. The Roman Forum. Before I went to Rome, I had no idea the Roman Forum existed. And I think it, it could easily be the coolest thing, the most amazing thing in all of Rome. It's, I don't want to say the Colosseum isn't, Unreal, but this, the Colosseum is just one structure. The Forum is a giant area with, I don't know, 20, 30 different structures. It, it's unreal. It's like multiple football fields long. Even more than that. That's not even giving it enough credit. It's way more than multiple football fields. It's, um, I don't know. It's, it's incredible. Again, I had no idea that this place existed. And then you go to it and you're like, oh my God, this is, this would be cool if it was just this in all of Rome. Like that would be enough to go visit Rome. Most cities have something that is just like the Roman Forum. And I don't mean just like the Roman Forum. I mean like the, oh, there's something as unique and pretty to see as a Roman Forum. And that's all it has. This is just a random thing in Rome. I guess it's not random, but you know what I mean. It also has the Palestine Hill, which gives you beautiful views of the city and all the structures. And honestly, the Roman Forum, kind of like I said, is probably my favorite site in all of Rome, just to the amount of things to see and pretty structures. Uh, and I think I've, I'm going to give you some tips and tricks. I'm just going through a few notes to make sure I didn't miss anything. The best area to stay in Rome. Rome is very safe, walkable. You can stay pretty much anywhere near the major sites and be happy. I mean, just look at the hotel reviews, the Airbnb reviews, and they'll tell you if it's 
walkable to XYZ. Uh, most people get overwhelmed on where to stay as there are so many options, but after spending time there, you, you really can stay anywhere. I mean, just be close ish to the main stuff and you'll be, it's just so beautiful. All of Rome is so stunning. It doesn't matter where you stay, uh, anywhere near Piazza Navona, Pantheon area, area or the Trevi Fountain Spanish Steps are great. And there's a ton of options around there. Obviously the most expensive as you get closer to the, um, nicer things, but yeah, staying near the Metro line is helpful. So you can go up and down the Metro line. Uh, with that said, you could stay near Capitoline Hill and the Roman Forum or the Colosseum area. So, and that's also right next to the Metro. Uh, my best advice would just be find the best value of a hotel with good reviews, which is somewhere central and book it and stop stressing. Trastevere is very nice as well. Or you could stay near the Vatican. However, I'd say ideally more central, like the Pantheon or Spanish Steps area, because it is quite central. Should you get the Roma Pass? It's a common question for visitors. I'm torn whether to get it or not. And when that's the case, I say don't get it. Um, it gives you two free museums if you buy the 72 hour pass. One. Of those, you can have a lion-skipping pass for the Coliseum. However, you still have to pay and reserve for a spot to see it. So it's still an extra step regardless. And um, and two of the museums I wanted to see, like Villa Borghese and the Capuchin Crypt, didn't accept their own pass. So it's good for transportation, but you can buy that separate simply enough. And as I mentioned, you should be walking around a ton anyway, so it's not really end of the world. You also still have to pay for the Metro line that takes you from the airport to Termini station, which is, you know, 15 to 20 euros. So it doesn't save you money there. You still have to pay for that travel on top of it. Um, transportation in Rome. Also, if I'm boring you, I, before I get to transportation, Tom, I'll give you some good tips and tricks because transportation in Rome, that, well, you can go to inspiretravel.com and see, read all this stuff if you missed it. You didn't want to rewind. You stopped listening and you don't even hear this. Um, so I'll get to transportation, some of the more boring stuff. Let's get more into the fun on my tips. Uh, don't have a set itinerary. I already told you that. Try not to go around the summer. I mentioned that as well. Um, do the Vatican at night. Less people. Also, it'll be cooler. And 95% of Vatican's indoors, so the light won't affect anything. And even the outdoor stuff is all lit up and beautiful. Wear comfortable shoes, I really mentioned this. Don't use the Roma Pass, as I mentioned, unless you're gonna use it efficiently. And if you, I mean, it's not crazy expensive. So if you have money, don't worry, just get it and don't worry, stress it anymore about it. But if you're on a budget, it's not as necessary. Uh, bring a large bottle of water everywhere to fill up the fountains. Should you bring your kids to Rome? I would say no. If you have to, Okay, fine. But they're going to be bored out of their mind. If I was a kid, Roman would be stupid. Uh, they wouldn't be impressed with the beauty. They may take future trips for granted after seeing Rome and everything else. Like, oh, cool. This is, I don't know what a terrible regular town is. Uh, it could ruin other places. But it's just so much walking, especially the heat. I don't know. They wouldn't grasp. I don't even think like a younger person, like a young adult under 25 would really uh, grasp the magnitude or just love how stunning it is compared to other places. Um, I guess under 25, you might, that's a stupid thing to say, but, but yeah, I mean, kids, they'll be more interested in the fish at the pond than the Roman form. I think I overheard that. Yeah, I did overhear it. Uh, one of the parents. The kids more, are more interested in the fish in the pond than the Roman form. So, um, you get my point. Next, uh, download Google Maps offline. Not much of a secret, but um, it'll help a ton, especially if you don't have an international phone plan and you just need Wi Fi. This will have the entire map on your phone downloaded so you can use it offline and kind of shows where you're walking 
around, you know, so you can find your location without having Wi-Fi. Very important because you're going to do a lot of walking, as I mentioned. The Vatican Museum and the Papal Audience are two separate tickets. You also probably want to do them on two separate days, so you have plenty of space between the two. Uh, so, two, just know that they're two separate tickets. Uh, so you aren't like, oh, I'm going to the Vatican and I get to see the papal audience. No, don't ruin your trip by making that mistake. Another tip, visit the Vatican Museum while rested. It's a touch dry. You're stuck behind people. You know, if you have family members or you yourself just gets hangry and annoyed with lines and hurry up and wait, if you add this to the end of your day and you've already just walked miles and miles or kilometers, depending where you're from, uh, it may tarnish the experience a little bit more, uh, especially your feet are going to fall, feel like they're going to fall off. And back to being tired. If you're tired, stop, relax, stop rushing. You don't need to run around. Take naps. It's not going anywhere. Go hard, coffee, brunch, afternoon nap, um, especially if you have some jet lag. Don't rush. Oh, for the papal audience, best place to sit, sit in a corner if you have a chance. Because the Pope comes out to greet everyone, drives around, waves, and sometimes walking so you may get a chance to shake hands, sometimes you even take selfies. So arrive one to two hours early because the lineups are long and you're waiting an hour just to get in. And then if you're in the corners near the, where the road is, where he goes around, you may get a little greedy. Um, that's pretty much it on the tips, transportation in Rome. And then I'll wind it up getting to and from the airport. I don't know, do you even want to listen to this? Just go to my website. Because this uh, was boring. I'm just going to read notes and boring notes. Nothing incredible. Uh, yeah, go to Rome. I spent 40 minutes telling you how magnific magnificent it is. Make sure it's a stop on your next trip to Europe if you've never been. This is the greatest travel podcast in the universe. I'm your host, Fraser LeVay, inspiredtravelite.com. Have a great day. Thanks for listening.